There are many famous tales of King Arthur's more illustrious round table members. But one courageous knight was incredibly forgotten. He was Sir Millard, the worthy bearer of the magnificent four diamonds. What is it you ask of me? We have anointed you Squire Millard. In order to become a Knight of the Round Table, you must prove yourself worthy. But how? How do I do that? Take the sword. With this sword, you must venture where all have failed before you. You must go into battle against evil, ignorance, and fear. I'm afraid. Never fear, for the courage of the round table is with you. magic words. You are so pathetic. On guard! Prepare to meet your doom. Now is my lady's honor defended in the name of King Arthur of the Round Table. Yield to your side of the field so we both may live. I yield, Sir Millard, and pray that you spare my life. Uh, sucker. You said you yielded. I lied. On guard! No, it's my turn to be a knight. Stacy, give me back my sword. You promised. You can't be a knight. Yeah, there were no girl knights at the round table. There is now. Stacy, wait! Death to the forces of evil! Down with King Arthur! I'm gonna get you, Stacy! And when I do, box! Help! You're dead, Stacy! I'm gonna break that piece of wood over your head! Chris, stop trying to kill your sister. She stole my sword. Chris, that's enough. Get back to hey, hey, hey. Whoa, are these the plans for the new house? They used to be. Come on, let's go inside. What? Mom's got dinner with you. Have you decided where my room's gonna be? You sit in the backyard with the dog. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, Mom. Hi. Oh, look at you. Hurry and wash up. Hi. 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 Sit down before oh, everything ladies. gets cold. So, Dad, how long will the house take to build? Depends on how many music lessons I have to give. Come on, Dad. Well, we have to dig the foundation, pour the footings, frame it, plumb it, wire it. Uh, a little less talking, work. more sitting down, please. It'll be the neatest house in Lancaster. I don't know about that, but at least it'll be ours. But really, Dad, how much longer till we be done? We'll start as soon as we get back from Philadelphia. 
Dr. Thompson's office called today, honey. He set her appointment there for Friday. Friday's ballet. Oh, you're only miss one class. I can't miss any. I'm trying out for the Swan in Swan Lake. Well, then I'll work with you after dinner. So, Dad, can we go to a Phillies game? Well, I thought you hated the Phillies. Oh, Dad. But I got four tickets just in case. We decided to spend the whole weekend, make a vacation out of it. Why do we all have to go? Well, Chris is having some tests. What kind of tests? Just tests. Chris does good on tests. Well, Dad, what are they going to do? Well, look, what is this? 20 questions? All he's got is a stuffy nose. Good night, son. Check it out, Dad. Orion. Take some imagination, but it helps if you squint. Dad, is it true that the light we're seeing tonight actually left the stars thousands of years ago? That's what they say. So the light that shines tonight will be seen by people thousands of years from now? Yeah, I guess it will. I wish I could look into the future, don't you? What's so bad about the way our life is right now? Too boring. There's so many things I want to do. I want surprises. Okay. We compromise. Surprises, but uh, only once in a while. And I get a thousand-year warning. Dad? Yeah? Do you think there'll be surprises in Philadelphia? I hope not. Good night, Dad. Good night, son. You must prove yourself worthy. I don't understand. You must leave your daily tasks in pursuit of miraculous deeds to be done. Each knight must find his own destiny. Go now and seek yours. May the spirit of the round table be with you. But where should I go? Excuse me. Excuse me. Who are you? I'm Dr. Burke, a colleague of uh, Dr. Thompson. I'm a specialist in problems like yours. Oh, I thought Dr. Thompson was a specialist. No, he's not. And he and your parents thought it would be a good idea to get a second opinion. How long have you had this stuffy nose? Oh, since uh, spring vacation, mm -hmm. I guess. Dr. Thompson said it might be. Some kind of cyst. It might. Well, Dr. Thompson already did that. I know. Look up for me, please. Breathe through your nose. I'm going to take a piece of tissue from your sinuses. It won't hurt. Just feel a little pinch. Look up. Ah! Good. All we need now... Uh, take some pictures. Hey, 
As you can see here, there is a large blockage of tissue. The cyst, right? No. A technical term is rhabdomyosarcoma. What's that? A muscle sarcoma. A tumor wrapped inside the nasal cavity. Well, they thought it was just a cyst. It's a very unusual condition in children, Mr. Millard. That's why Dr. Thompson sent you here. Well, isn't that what they said? Just a cyst. We recommend immediate chemotherapy. Look, Stacy, we should go back. Dad told us to wait outside Dr. Burke's office. Wow. What happened to them? How'd you like to look like that? What if you had a pointed head and didn't know it until your hair fell out? Where have you been? We've been looking all over for you. Can we go now? What's the matter, Mom? Oh, we have to stay here for a little while, Chris. What for? You need some treatments to lick this thing. I don't belong here, Mom. We don't have a choice, honey. Oh, well, can I get these treatments at home? I wish you could. Uh, this is special medicine only Dr. Burke can give you. Well, how long do I have to stay here, Dad? Not long. Stacy and I will hold down the fort, and you can stay here with Mom. But as soon as it gets better... As soon as what gets better? You have a growth, a tumor, behind your nose. That's why you can't breathe. Honey. Dr. Burke, can I ask you something? What? Is that how I'm going to look when you make me better? Come on, Stacy. Let's get your brother's things. with you. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? Maybe not for you. Dr. Burke will be here in a second. Nurse? Carol. Am I going to get better? Well, you could grow horns and a tail, or it could be nothing. I'll take nothing. First day? How could you tell? All the new guys have hair. I'm Tony, the human bowling ball. Chris Millard. You like baseball, Millard? Yeah, the pirates. Pirates? Uh, that's not allowed here. Where are you from? Lancaster. Middle of nowhere. And I suppose you're from Philadelphia. No way, not Philly. South Philly. Ah, uh, the capital of nowhere. Not bad. You got potential. Look, first day's the hardest, but you get used to it. Just don't believe anything they tell you, and whatever you do, don't eat after treatments. All right, Mr. Falco. Back where you came from. See you later. All right. That should do it. What's going to happen? Well, the medicine will probably upset your stomach. No kidding. Enough, Mr. Falco. You are collecting spades. Oh, what a tragedy. She used to be so good in her day, but now they got to put her out to pasture. Your turn. Chris? Honey? Are you 
okay? Jim, read him and weep. You're dead, man. Nobody hits Carlton. Not even Clemente. Strike three! Out of there. I don't know what you're so pissed off about. I told you your hair was gonna fall out. I look like a freak. You never looked that good with hair. Try this. Works for me. Makes you look like a king. Dr. Burkett hurts my arm and I cannot see. Please invent a treatment that I can't take orally. Thank you very much. And now for my next number. Tough crowd. Get better. Not everybody does. Chris, your parents are here. <sighs> Thanks anyway. I like the Beatles. Something wrong? Why is everybody here? Well, everything's fine. We, uh, we have a surprise for you. I don't want any more surprises. I think you're gonna like this one. We've come to take you home. <laughs> Wait, well, you mean I'm better? <laughs> there are some signs that the chemotherapy is working, yes. You're better. You still need to come in for regular checkups, and you may need more treatment. Take care. Oh, how soon can we leave? How does right now sound? <laughs> Bye, Lucy. Bye-bye, Chris. Say. Hey. hey. I'm gonna get the car. Okay. I'm going home. That's great. So you got a replacement for Elvis. Nice rug. Oh, yeah. My parents got it for me. I'm starting junior high. Oh, yeah. School. Almost forgot. In case you want to root for a winner. 
Yeah, I'll trade you. I don't know if I can wear it, but it might come in handy after chemo. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hey, Tony. You're gonna get better, too. I know it. Yeah, I hope you're right. Sorry, my second time in here. I thought we were taking the kids shopping for school. We are. I just want to show you something first. <laughs> wow! This is great! Pretty neat, huh? When did you start? While well, you were busy goofing off in the hospital. Well, well, honey... Uh... What do you think? I thought we agreed to wait. No, we've waited long enough. What about Chris? What about Chris? Charles, we decided we were going to wait until we this knew exactly what was going to happen. Well, I did it for him. So that he'd have to get better, and he did. This is the dining room with the fireplace. Where's my room, Dad? Come with me. Mom, over here, I want to show you my room. What, here? Nope. Here. Above the garage. What do you think? Your own private observatory. Oh, far out. This is going to be perfect, Ma. So Dad says we'll start pouring the foundation next week. That's so cool. Stop here, Ma. OK. Want me to go in with you? You notice I passed out blue books with your syllabi? So I want each of you to write a paper on what you did during your summer vacation. OK, class dismissed. Yes? What if nothing happened to us all summer? <laughs> then write about nothing, but make it interesting. OK, class dismissed. Ms. Kerr. Yes? Chris Millard. I don't think I can do the assignment. Why not? I've been real sick all summer. I was in the hospital. I just don't want to write about that. Then write about something else. Some other experience in your life. Or make something up. Use your imagination. Now go on. You'll be late for your next class. You all right? For the tenth time, I'm fine. Fine enough to clean up this room, young man? This is the tenth time I've asked you. I have to write this stupid essay for English. Well, it's almost bedtime. I suggest you get to it. What difference does it make? And what is that supposed to mean? 
Nothing. That's your attitude towards everything these days, Chris. What attitude do you expect me to have? The same one you had before you got sick. And that means not goofing off in school. It means cleaning up this room. And it means being a part of this family. Do you understand? There are many famous tales of King Arthur's more illustrious knights of the round table. But one of these gallant knights was amazingly forgotten. He was Sir Millar, worthy bearer of the magnificent Diamondus Quadris, the Four Diamonds. some time since Millard had left King Arthur's court in search of deeds to be done in the name of goodness. Now, before him, atop a knoll, rose a dark and ghostly castle. He knew it was the home of the evil sorceress, Raptenahan. I hear you say. <laughs> That's a challenge I don't get every day. I've come to put an end to the suffering you've brought upon this land. Be careful, my pet, for you haven't a clue as to what this fight will do to you. Still, I'll grant your wish. But first things first, scale these walls to my castle first. But if you can't, die alone. 
<laughs> Buried in ash and granite stone. <laughs> Fallen captive to the unpredictable Raptinahem. You've been home, what, six weeks? Yeah. My dad and I started working on our new house. How have you been? Any improvement in the breathing? A little. Good. Let's have a look, shall we? Put your head back for me. A little farther. A little more. I'll know more tomorrow. Right. Based on today's examination, I'm recommending a new round of treatment for Chris. Well, I thought he was finished. I thought that's why you sent him home. We sent him home to give the chemotherapy a chance to work. Well, you haven't given it much time. Six weeks is adequate time. It hasn't been effective. What kind of treatment? I'd like to begin radiation therapy. What's wrong with the chemotherapy? It's not working. Dad. I thought he was getting better. Now, why can't we give it more time? Charles. Do me a favor, Chris. What? Breathe through your nose for me.
hungry? There's a dish I made myself, though I doubt it will improve your health. <laughs> Resourceful boy to find that spear. How smart of me to leave it here. Enough of your games. If it's a fight you want, let's get on with it. What? And lose the fun of winning? Don't be foolish. I'm just beginning. <laughs> At least have the courage to fight me fair. A fight, you say? No. Just a test. To prove which one of us is best. To earn your freedom, you must do four simple tasks that I construe. And for each task that you complete, I'll lay a gemstone at your feet. <laughs> Courage and wisdom, honesty are three. Strength is last, huh. which will never be. If my four diamonds you attain, I'll stay the darkness and proclaim to turn from evil to the light. Return your freedom and end of the fight. I'll leave this here down at your feet. In case you wish a late night treat. <laughs> so the thing is, if I get the pardon swan like I get to do all the really neat stuff. You know the story? Well, there's this prince who... Oh, my gosh. You look terrible. Thanks. You're not getting any better, are you? Yes, I am. The treatments make me sick. But it must be working. Then why is Dad acting so weird? And Mom's so nice, it's creepy. Stacy, Dad's always weird. And since when is Mom being nice a bad thing? I'll work it out. I'll give more lessons if I have to. <laughs> that is not what Chris needs. What he needs is you. Well, Chris is going to be fine. How can you know? Because I know my son. He's my son, too. I can't do this alone. Nobody's asking you to do this alone. Don't you understand? He could die. It's the man. Stacy. Stacy, it'll be all right. Where's your pumpkin? Oh, we couldn't agree. I'm letting Stacy pick. These look great. Can I have one? Sure. Now watch yourself. Stace! Dad? Yeah. What is it? Something wrong? Chris, what's happening? I can smell it, Dad. I can smell the apple. I knew it. I knew it would happen. <laughs> yeah, Bertha. Big fetch. Sit down, please.
Are you married? Excuse me? Are you married? I was wondering. So are you? No, no, I'm not. Put your legs up, please. How come? I have too many people to take care of as it is. Lie down. You won't have me for much longer. We're not quite out of the woods yet. Who takes care of you? I take care of myself. That's too bad. <laughs> Why is that too bad? Sounds kind of lonely. I have friends, young man. I'm not just some old witch, you know. You live alone? Why all this interest in my personal life? You know everything about me. Just want to know about you. I have a cat named Hippocrates. Cats are good. You don't have to spend any time with them. If you had a dog, you'd have problems. Actually, I had a dog once. What happened? He ran away. The lie still? not necessary. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I trust that you're well fed and rested. Come, don't be shy. For now, you'll be tested. Beyond the meadows and forest green, beyond the weeds you find pristine, lies a place no man dare tread. Why? <laughs> <laughs> a few return, alive or dead. <laughs> a haunted butte where phantom soar rises from the valley floor. <laughs> Climb this peak where lost souls moan. There you face death all alone. It is here you'll find the tree of life. Seize its fruit. Or face my knife. Feel too good. How long are you sticking around? <coughs> Just here for my uh, my treatment. What about you? Extra innings. Stuck here for another round of chemo. And next time you come and call first. Oh, you'll be home by then. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you around the neighborhood.
Hey, Millard. Want your cat back? I give it to you. Yeah, but... Don't be stupid. The season's over. We'll talk about it next year when the Pirates go to spring training. Deal? Yeah. Deal. Managed to do your deed. For this courage you have shown, my first diamond you shall own. his first diamond, the diamond of courage. What are we celebrating? Did I get a phone call from Mrs. Hart? Not yet. We're celebrating Chris's checkup. Even the infamous Dr. Burke had to admit she was pleased. I still have to finish my treatments, Dad. We can handle that. I'll get it. Dad got something for you today. Oh. I baseball, but I love my son. Guess what, everybody? This is so great. Right. Where did you find this? Jimmy Schmidt's Guess piano what? lesson. You know, he's a tough negotiator. Yeah. It cost me ten dollars and two free lessons. Gentlemen, if you please. 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 Start mm -hmm. to if you please, Stacy has something to tell us. Stacy? I had tryouts for Swan Lake at ballet today. That's terrific, honey. I got the part. <laughs> I'm the swan. Chris? Chris, are you all right? Mrs. Hart said I did the best of everybody. Chris. Chris? It's all right, honey. You know how the treatments make him sick. No, it's not all right. It's never all right. He ruins Stace, can I talk to you for a minute? Leave me alone! Stace, I'm sorry that I'm sick. It's just that I'm getting better, you know? I'm just glad you got the part. I don't care. Go away. I don't want to talk to you. Squire with angry eyes, who thinks he's been so brave and wise. But mark these words, my foolish pawn. The game's not over. <laughs> it's just begun. For twixt deep bogs and stinking dells, near a lagoon, a hermit dwells, who guards a treasure that swims beyond the ivory feathered, stacious swan. Bring her back. Bring her to me. You say you're wise. Well, 
<laughs> we'll see. Friends, Chris. I'm sorry about school, but Stacy really loves you. She sure has a funny way of showing it. She, she's scared, Chris. Imagine what it's like to have a brother you adore and then find out something terrible might happen to him. I'd be nice to him all the time. I wouldn't do anything to upset him. Christopher. Give her some time. She'll work it out. Well, it's hard for me to wait. I know. But you have to let her come to you. Coming in? In a minute. More determined than ever, Millard renewed his efforts to capture the elusive Stacia Swan. your service. Hmm. I am the hermit who guards this lagoon. Why have you disturbed the peace of my home? I am on a great quest to free this kingdom from the evil powers of Reptenahead. To do so, I must capture the mystical Stacia Swan. <laughs> and it is my job to protect her. She means more to me than life itself. And to me as well. Though I only glimpsed at her beauty for the first time. Pretty words, but are they true? I swear I would die before I let any harm come to her. I believe you are of good heart. A lot of good that does me. Can you tell me how to capture the Stacia Swan? She cannot be captured. But you get to keep what you set free. I do not understand your riddles. You're a squire. Use your head.
Give her some time. You have to let her come to you. What's happening? What's wrong? There's bugs in my room. What kind? Really bad ones. All right, let's have a look. No! What if there are snakes, too, and giant spiders? <gasps> Quick, Stacy! Get my sword! Maybe I could just stay in here with you for a while. Yeah, okay. Chris? What? Thank you for my roses. They're the prettiest of all the ones I got. I'm glad, Stace. Now turn that thing off and go to bed. What? Are you gonna die? Yeah. From lack of sleep. Stacy! Yes, Christopher. Turn the light off. Don't forget the mail, Chris. Bears love it. Come on, Dad. And put your hat on. You look weird with hair. Don't worry. It'll scare the bears away. Do you think we'll be able to move in by Christmas? I think that might be a little optimistic. Well, I don't think so. I think we'll make it. Our own castle for Christmas. Maybe we should dig a moat. What's moat? But first you got the tower, then you got the castle walls. Then you got this big ditch filled with dirty water. <laughs> That's 
the moat. That's disgusting. No more, Chris. I believe that solves the moat problem. What about your room, Chris? You want to uh, do a little work? Yeah, sure, that'd be great. It's been a long day. I thought we'd head on home. Why don't we leave it up to Chris? I want to, Mom. The, the more we do, the sooner we can move in. Come on, Dad, before she changes her mind. Perfect. You're doing great. Well, should have hired you to build a whole house. Okay, a couple more boards. Dad, can we go now? Well, come on, Chris. We're almost done. Chris, what's the matter? My head. My head hurts. Come on. You just right. couldn't stay away, eh, Chris? I feel fine now. Dad, we can go home. As long as you're here, let's take a look at you. Where are you taking me? Dr. Burke wants to do a CAT scan. She'll see you as soon as she looks at the pictures. Away, all right? He's probably better off. Lie down, Chris. Don't move. You've moved too slowly to meet my needs. No matter how brave have been your deeds. You gave me your word. Oh, my word. You think that's a promise? Don't be absurd. <laughs> this next task, a test of truths, will weed out knights from pitiful beauty. Just tell me what I must do! Just tell me what I must do! Tell me! Just go! Ride away on your pathetic stallion, but fail not to bring back the Athene medallion. But how? Where do I find it? Oh, I see the armor's cracking. Or is it your knighthood that's truly lacking? I beg of you! Please. Tell me. Mysterious wizard. Devious of mind. More clever than Merlin first, you must find. For hung on a chain held close to his heart, this Athene medallion from me he did part. And if you succeed, though I doubt it will be. The diamond of honesty will be yours. Number three. an accident what a great idea i don't need any driving tips from you what's going to happen to me nothing's going to happen to you dr burke said the cat scan was inconclusive you know headaches just sometimes happen what if they happen again well, we'll just have to try some other treatments that's all you mean me I'll try some other treatments. Yes, you. You'll have to try some other treatments. I'm sorry, honey. We have to wait to see what Dr. Burke says. She wants to check you again in three weeks. Dad, why doesn't the medicine work? Well, it might take more time. But why aren't I getting better? Look, can we talk about this tomorrow? Why can't we talk about it now? 
Damn it, Irma. It's just a flat tire. You scared the hell out of me. I'm sorry. And what else can happen to them? Get back in the car, Chris. Well, I want to help. You can't help. Now get back in the car. Careful, buddy. It is not his fault we have a flat tire. All he wants you to do is talk to him. What am I supposed to tell him? That everything he's been through has been for nothing? This is not going to go away because you won't talk about it. Look, it's not going to go away if I do. For God's sake, he's frightened enough already as it is. But he is stronger than any of us. He takes his medicine. He throws his guts up. None of his friends will go near him, but he is dealing with it. You're the one who's frightened. Charles, it is his life. Time was running short. Squire Millard had begun to fear that his quest was doomed. Millard must search out Charles the Mysterious and return with his sacred Athene medallion. Rep. Tenahead was certain that Charles would never reveal himself to anyone. in it plain. That ungrateful ass tossed my old bones over here and made splinters of my car. Perhaps I can lend a hand. I need no help from you nor anyone. And I'll tell you straight, if I ever do get up, that beast is glue. Mm -hmm. Well, if you could find it in you to sheath your pride, perchance I might serve you both. Squire Millard is my name. And you, sir. Oh, me. I'm called Clessel. It is a kindness you do me, Squire, but how do I know you've not come to rob me? I have no use for money, sir. <laughs> and who but the gods have no use for money? Oh, you're not a god, are you? Hardly, sir. I'm on a quest. Ah, and what be the grand thing at the end of your rainbow, boy? A pot of gold? The Holy Grail? My freedom, sir. My future. How is it a smart boy like you has got himself into the clutches of that old witch? Uh, I was tricked, sir. And for my freedom, I must do Rep. Tenahead's bidding. <laughs> Only two tasks remain for me to complete, but I feel time is running short. And where are you bound on this, this mission of yours, Squire Millard? I am in search of a great wizard. Charles the Mysterious. And what could you possibly want from this, this Charles the Mysterious? I must beg him to give up his most prized possession, the Athene medallion. And what if he won't give it to you? In the court of the round table, sir. Honesty begets honesty. Hmm. In the court of the forest, ignorance begets bliss. Good soup for one so young. <laughs> I bid you farewell, sir. It's a squire. Mm. Uh, where are you bound? As you cannot help me find Charles the Mysterious, I must find someone who can. Oh, no one can. Charles the Mysterious cannot be found. Well, why is that? Well, the story I heard eh, is long ago, Charles was a, a foolish man. He was in the habit of, of helping people wherever he went. Well, what's so foolish about that? Oh, no, not, nothing, nothing at all. But, but people began to take advantage of him. You know, making, making demands of him. You know, they said he had magical power. Well, did he? Oh, some. Some, he could pull a, a rabbit out of a hat, you know. But people kept coming and begging for, for more and more feats of magic. He couldn't bear to, to disappoint them. That is why he went into hiding. At least, is what I heard. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 Squire, before, don't go. You could do me one last turn. And what would that be, sir? 
my life savings. You can take those pieces down to the stream and clean them. You know, shine till you can see their faces. I'd be in your debt, Squire. Charles the Mysterious. No, we ain't. So I am. Why were you not honest with me? With so many people asked so much of me, I couldn't possibly give them all that they wanted. But you still have many gifts to share. Well, perhaps you're right, my friend. In that case, I want you to take this gift as a token of our friendship. That you may free yourself from Reptanahad, the Queen of Darkness. But you need this. If she owns it, it'll make her even more powerful than ever. No, young squire. The power of this medallion will only serve the pure of heart. As a brave young squire once said, in the code of the round table, honesty begets honesty. I want you to have it. Chris? There's somebody here to see you. Say? Hey! Have my final checkup. Isn't that terrific? Uh-huh. Dr. Burke says my chances are pretty good. You look great. Thanks. What are you up to? Just, uh, getting these things organized. Yeah, I can see that. This is a great room, Millard. Thanks. That's some collection. Yeah. Larry Boa. Luzinski. Hey, Richie Allen. Taking care of my fillies. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Sure. Are you here because you wanted to come? Or did my parents ask you? Chris. You asked for Tony to give you a call. Both. Thanks for being honest. I want to tell you something, Tony. Pretty sick. I know. Hey, that doesn't mean anything. I die. You're not gonna die. If I die, I want you to go on with my cards. But you gotta promise to keep up the pirates. Chris, that is enough of that. You are not going to die. Dad, the cancer just keeps growing back. You knew, didn't you? For a long time. Sorry I got sick, but it's not my fault. Your fault? Where did you get that idea? From you. You want to 
talk to me about what's really happening. And you yell at Mom if she tries. I, I, I just didn't want to scare you. I feel like you're mad all the time. I, I think you and Mom are going to get a divorce. Chris, will you stop that? Nobody is getting a divorce. Dad, if I don't grow up, don't think I didn't accomplish anything or have a good chance at life. I never thought that. I'm proud of you. Every day, I just, I feel like I let you down. You didn't let me down, Dad. You kept me going. You kept us going. I'm just glad we don't have to pretend anymore. Intensive care after the procedure and reassess him in the morning. Yes, Dad. We're the health anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. It's for page. Right. Give him 16 milligrams of Dex to reduce the pressure on the nerve. Dex? What's Dex? What does it do? It's a methadone. Just let us do our job. Doctor, I can't see. Chris? Ask Dr. Marshall to meet us in surgery. Tell him we're going to do an exploratory procedure to determine the effect of the tumor on the patient's vision. Yes, Doctor. Please help me. I'm scared. Lest I turn you into what you are, a pest. I'm preparing a potion of such evil power. It will have you killed within the hour. You asked me to bring back the Athene medallion. I haven't lost my head. I know exactly what I said. Then we agree that my third quest is fulfilled. I've brought it back. Late is the hour, my boorish lout. Way past time for your final bout. How badly do you want it? How badly do you want this? The diamond of strength, your terminal gate. Forever imprisoned shall be your fate. Fury and thunder, all that is fear. Bring me the head of the Black Cavalier. Now go. I said go! Chris, the tumor has grown to where it's now affecting the optic nerve. The doctors think you're going to lose your sight, honey. We hope it will only be temporary, but we're not sure. We just don't know. But special treatment for special patients. Get your chemo in your room today. No. Chris? I said no. All it does is make me sick. I'm tired of being sick. This is to help you get better. I'm not getting better. You said you could help me, but you can't. The medicine doesn't work. You can't just give up, Chris. What difference does it make to you? You don't care about me. You just go home and you watch TV or something while I'm throwing up all night. Yes, 
course it is. You're a witch. You don't care about anything or anybody. Get out of my sight. He doesn't mean that. Yes, I do. She couldn't even take care of her own dog. I'm not your enemy, Chris. I would do anything to save you. Anything. But I don't get to choose who gets better and who doesn't. Look, um... I'm sorry if I didn't show you how much I care. And you should know that... I don't say your kind of courage hurt. I don't see your kind of courage very often. And dealing with me, too. Dr. Burke? I'm not giving up on you. Don't you give up, either. I never do. Exhausted and worn from his previous expeditions, he left once again with the hope that he would someday return. As if his mighty opponent expected him, across a wide and sandy expanse sat the Black Cavalier. home for the holidays. Honey? Hi, honey. Let's get you into your room. You got the TV set up in front of your bed and everything. Ought to be some good games on today. Yeah.
to your side of the field, so we both may live. Well, maybe you'll be hungry later, huh? We have apple and pumpkin pies for dessert. The food doesn't matter. The important thing is we're all together. Dad, do you remember Peggy's Cove? Yeah, of course I do. Last Thanksgiving. That's only been a year since we've been there. We stayed in that little blue house on stilts over the cove. I remember us walking along the beach. The water was freezing. But we looked into those tide pools. And we saw thousands of tiny fish. You said that's where life began. And Stacy was afraid of the sand crabs, and Mom had to carry her. <laughs> I'll always remember us there at Peggy's Cove. <laughs> Stace? It's all right, Stacy. Dad, would you carry me up to my room? When Malard arrived at the castle, he noticed a change had taken place in the total environment. No longer was the forest dark and morbid, but now it was full of animals, and birds were singing cheerfully from the green trees. No longer was Raptenahad's castle black and ghostly, but now it was a noble, stately palace. Even the banners from the towers were not those of the sinister sorceress. Instead, they were four diamonds on a field of azure blue, the Diamondus Quadrus. Realizing that he had destroyed Raptenhead, Millard entered the palace that bore his very own coat of arms. Alas, the fighting was over. There would be peace. Millard had proven that he truly deserved his knighthood, and from then on he lived in glory, a Sir Millard of the Four Diamonds. <laughs> Chris Millard died of cancer at age 14. 
His short story, The Four Diamonds, became the inspiration for a children's fund created in his memory. Chris Millard and his legacy of courage, wisdom, honesty, and strength will not be forgotten.